Pneumatic energy is converted to linear reciprocating movements by means of pneumatic cylinders. Compressed air can also be used to convert pneumatic energy into rotary motion. The single acting cylinder consists of cylinder barrel, base and bearing caps, piston with seal, piston rod, and reset spring. This design of single acting cylinder can perform work only on the advanced stroke. If compressed air is applied to the piston surface, the piston rod moves out. If the cylinder space is exhausted, the reset spring forces the piston back to its initial position. The piston force is the product of the pressure P and the piston area A. Opposed to this piston force are the spring force, the frictional forces which arise between piston seal and cylinder wall, piston rod and bearing bush. The effective force F is thus the piston force minus the spring force minus the frictional forces. The double acting cylinder can perform work on both the advance and the return strokes. If compressed air is applied to the double acting cylinder and the opposite side is exhausted, the piston rod moves out. If air is supplied to the rod end and exhausted from the piston end, piston returns to its initial position. On the advanced stroke, the pressure acts on the whole piston area A. The piston force F, advanced stroke, equals the pressure P times piston area A. On the return stroke, the effective piston area, A, is reduced by the area of the rod, A0. The piston force, F, return stroke, equals the pressure, P, times the piston area, A, less the rod area, A0. To obtain piston forces, which are as nearly as possible equal for the advance and the return strokes, the cross-sectional area of the rod is kept as small as possible. Limits are imposed on this for reasons of strength. If a force is applied in an axial direction to the end of the piston rod, buckling occurs.
If the force acts in a transverse direction, the end of the piston rod bends in the direction of the force. In the fully moved out condition, the deflection is greatest because the distance from the bearing is smallest. The bending here is smallest because the bearing distance is greatest. The purpose of the seal is to seal off the cylinder chambers from each other. The magnitude of the friction is largely dependent on the shape of the seal. The O-ring seals towards both sides, has small dimensions and relatively high constant frictional forces. With the groove ring seal, one seal is required on each sealing side. With the double cup packing, a steel disc is used in place of the piston. If large masses are moved, an end position cushioning is used. It prevents hard impacts. The cushioning piston interrupts the direct escape path of the air to the outside before the piston has reached its end position. A cushion of air, an excess pressure, builds up in the remaining cylinder space. The air can now only escape through a small adjustable exhaust aperture. When the piston moves out, the air flows unhindered into the cylinder chamber owing to the return function. Pneumatic motors release their work capacity in a rotary manner in the form of a torque. The most frequently used type of pneumatic motor is the sliding vane motor. The rotor corresponds to the piston rod and the vane corresponds to the piston. The product of A and P equals the surface force. That is, F equals P times A. The product of surface force and radius is the torque M. That is, M equals F times R. In piston motors of radial piston design, the cylinders are arranged in star fashion. The pistons act on a common crankshaft. In the axial piston motor design, the pistons are parallel to the shaft, that is, in axial direction. The torque is transmitted to the drive shaft by means of a swash plate. To summarize, single acting cylinders exert force linearly in one direction.
double acting cylinders exert force linearly in two directions. In pneumatic motors, pneumatic energy is converted to rotary motion. The force is converted to a torque and transferred to a shaft. 